Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How to Take Your Dealership from Good to Great. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. And for anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. DealerOn was named the top-rated website provider by driving sales in 2011, and DealerOn customers were winners of the spring and fall 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards, including the all-important overall winner. DealerOn is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a lead guarantee program. <laughs> leads guaranteed. So if your website company isn't guaranteeing you leads, well, then maybe you should check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have such a great show in store for you today. We are very pleased to have April Rain as our presenter today. April Rain is the founder and CEO of Digital Rain Management, a consulting, training, and events company with expertise in the fields of digital marketing, social media, e-commerce, sales, and process development. April has been in the automotive re retail sales and marketing for more than 13 years and has spent the last four years specializing in the rapidly expanding universe of e-commerce. April dares you to find her on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, or contact her directly at april at digitalrainmanagement.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. And if we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. And please, feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at Digital Rain Management are giving away so many prizes today. I got to tell you about them early so you know, our dear attendees, what is going on. So first, everyone today is going to receive free organizational templates and example strategy questions. All you have to do is go to dealerevents.com and become a member today and you're going to win this great prize. Membership is free, but it's also priceless so you don't want to miss that go to dealerevents.com and you're going to get free organizational templates and example strategy questions also today everyone will also get a free code to add Datium analytics onto your dealership websites it will be at the very end of the presentation and it is valued at ninety nine dollars a month so if you want to join more than I think it's eight or nine or ten thousand other dealerships that have these awesome analytics on their website you're going to get it for free today. You definitely want to take advantage of that. And Digital Rain is also offering one lucky attendee a free one hour consultation on digital marketing and training. And this prize is valued at $200. It offers your dealership the chance to ask questions and receive feedback on your websites, social media, or CRM reports. You can also choose to use that time to be trained on how to read analytics. All you have to do is stay tuned and answer a simple question toward the end of today's webinar. And the first one to write in the correct response wins this totally cool prize. Also, if you could fill out a short survey at the conclusion of today's webinar, because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience, today we're also going to randomly select winners from all the completed surveys to win some Google prizes. Phew! That is a lot of stuff we're giving away today. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's learn how to take your dealership from good to great. April Rain, how are you doing today? I am fantastic. Thank you, Eliana. Oh, April, I am so excited. I want everyone on this webinar to know that April actually presented this information, this good to great information, at a conference recently, and it was like, wild, standing room only, applause, uh, you know, five stars, you name it. She got great response. And so I knew I had to get her here onto the Dealer on webinars to tell all of you how to take your dealership from good to great. So I am curious, April, I know we're learning a lot today, but can you tell everyone really quick all the different things that we're going to learn today in this next hour? Yeah, absolutely, Eliana. Thank you so much. So. 
Uh, for starters, uh, I never, ever know what to tweet. I'm like one of the world's worst tweeters. I feel like I've uh, dominated the Facebook, at least for my own personal branding. So I thought as a service to you, uh, my listeners, that I would just help you by giving you tweet suggestions. So you're going to see periodically through my webinar uh, the tweet suggestions. So if you're curious, my hashtag is April underscore rain. And of course, it's at dealer on, and then the hashtag for this is the automotive good to great. So uh, keep, keep an eye out for some of those things. Uh, we do have a ton of information right now. So uh, one, I just realized that I wish I had more of a movie phone voice like Eliana. So I think right <laughs> after this, I'm going to work on that. <laughs> uh, I uh, have never given a uh, presentation webinar before. I used to do training webinars all the time. But this is uh, one of the first times I've ever taken a, what used to be a workshop and turned it into a presentation. And one of the things that's always really helped me when I'm presenting live is I usually have some sort of like goofy joke that I'm telling people as they're walking in or you know teasing them a little bit, kind of as Eliana was doing with the, the chat. And then seeing people smile really uh, helps my nervousness and insecurities. So I just have to let you know, like right now, I'm just imagining all of you like laughing wildly at everything I say. And your, none of your coworkers are going to think you're actually on a webinar. They're going to think that you're watching YouTube because you're like enjoying this so much. So just bear with me. I'm, I'm picturing you all doing that. So, <laughs> I'll you know, laugh I'm, at all your jokes. Don't worry. And people are okay. writing in smiley faces and laughing wildly. So <laughs> I want to have my token happy person. So well, when I first uh, created this presentation, it was meant for uh, a couple of different local and, and national conferences. But then after doing this study, I ended up doing these three-hour workshops in Missouri with the Missouri Dealers Association and uh, local dealers. And when you do three hours, you really have to provide the guts of the how-tos, right? It can't be upper level. You really have to dive into how to build a strategy and how to walk away with results. Well, I had such uh, great feedback from dealers about that information that when I decided to do this webinar, I tried to figure out how could I take the best of both worlds. One, uh, give you the results of the study. So as you can see here over in the agenda, we're going to go through the study of successful dealers. But then I really wanted to make sure that you guys got the digital strategy guts. Uh, I've attended a number of conferences, and I'm really frustrated when you get a lot of good ideas, but then you don't really get the execution part of uh, the information. So I am going to give you plenty of tips for execution, and I'm going to end with some resources uh, for all of you so not writing stuff down. And of course, I'm going to have the thank you slide because I'm a polite individual. Eliana will remind you of the prizes, and of course, we'll be around. I'll stick around as long as you guys want for question and answer, but because I know that uh, it's a busy time in automotive right now, and uh, I don't want to keep you past our designated hour, I'm going to tear through this stuff really fast. Once again, remember that it's recorded, so uh, a lot of the things that maybe you wish that I stayed on that slide longer, you're going to be able to go back, look at it, freeze print it out, hang it on your wall, put little hearts around it. <laughs> okay, I'm warning everyone. Like I said, got a sneak peek of this a couple days ago. It is a lot of information. Really try and pay attention. Of course, we're going to sneak in that prize question towards the end, and we have a lot of stuff to get to, so let's go. Yes, it is going to be recorded, and it will be posted online later this evening. And I'm going to send you guys all a link to go and see it. So go ahead, April, take it away. Okay, so you guys saw the last slide that said, why should I even be on this webinar? Uh, what started the, that fueled this study was that from 1990 to 2010, we have lost more than 30% of the franchise dealers across the country. Now, a lot of that was brand consolidation and the loss of a couple other franchise brands. But still, I mean, that's a serious problem for one out of three dealers to have not made it through our recession. So when I started to look at that, I thought about, well, how did those dealers survive? Like the dealers that made it through, what did they do to become successful? So that fueled my study of successful dealers. I look at it this way. We could either spend a lot of time and money and resources trying to figure out what we need to do right, or we can copy the dealers that have already done it and just do what they did. So last year, uh, last November, actually almost a year ago last week, uh, I branched out and started my own company. And so after looking at digital leaders like Zappos, I really wanted to figure out what would it take to become a digital leader? What would it take for me to have a successful and thriving company? So I went and started reading all these different books, Good to Great, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Strength Finders, 
uh, a whole slew of uh, different books, and I started to see a synergy between uh, things that were happening with successful leaders. And I started to see that there was like this cohesion that successful companies all tend to have the similar approach and similar operating philosophies. But I also know that automotive is a very unique beast, right? Uh, when people go to buy a car, it's completely different than when they go to buy any other uh, product. It's much more emotional, it's much more expensive, and they spend a lot more time trying to make their decision. So I wanted to see if all the things that I was reading and getting out of these books would pertain to all the people uh, that I knew that were succeeding online. So I started out by asking this very elaborate uh, study. It was probably about 60 questions. I let them off the hook with a couple uh, multiple choice, but it was a lot of text writing. They really had to, to participate. And uh, I know that you introduced AJ Maiden who was on the call. I know that I heard uh, Kevin Fry on the call. And, um, and there's a handful of other dealers along with Jim Bell that all participated in this study. And so this is just a collection of the people that at least gave me permission to use their logos uh, for this presentation. <laughs> so uh, I want to give you a little bit of demographics of like who we were looking at. So uh, the questions were aimed toward anybody that was the digital uh, or the uh, decision maker for their digital budget. So it wasn't all uh, uh, dealers or general managers or marketing managers or internet managers. It was anybody that was the decision maker. Uh, and I wanted to get an idea of like what type of people were filling out these surveys. So the average was anywhere between a one store to two to five stores to seem to be about what we were finding. I didn't do too many megas, not too many people past uh, 20 stores. I didn't do any uh, big franchises like uh, AutoNation or Penske, mostly because I don't really think they need our help. So, <laughs> And they're not the typical dealer. So I really wanted to focus on who was the, the typical dealer. So after that, I wanted to see how their internet team is set up. So I was recently at Driving Sales, and I saw this fascinating debate that was hosted by Joe Webb between uh, Kevin Fry and uh, Jim Bell. I'm sorry, not Jim Bell. Um, uh, oh, God, Jim, Jim Flint. Sorry, I can't believe I didn't say that. Oh. So between, uh, <laughs> you got, Jim Bell, you got me on the brain since we were talking this morning. Between Jim, um, Jim Flint and Kevin Fry, and immediately when they took the stage, I was like, this is going to be a compelling argument. The argument was, should a dealership be an internet dealership, or should they have an internet team? Meaning, internet dealership would be all the salespeople operate on an internet level, and uh, so that would kind of be this pink and green bars here, all sales for a pool or all sales for a round robin, versus an internet team or on-site BDC. They both made extremely compelling arguments. I was really impressed. Uh, but they actually, one of the strongest statements came at the end that said, you know what, no matter what you do, it's the process that you can manage effectively uh, that's going to yield the greatest results. And I completely stand behind that statement. I work with dealers that are all of these different combinations of internet uh, teams. And it's whatever you feel that you can manage. If you don't have a strong internet sales floor, then you should have an internet team. I also see throughout the country a growing need for the on-site BDC, and that is probably my personal preference because I really feel that the people that are in charge of lead management are not necessarily uh, the same people that excel at sales. I know when I was a salesperson, what I did really well was being able to build rapport, uh, talk about the vehicle, make them feel comfortable, and then uh, help them get the car that they want. Nowadays, you would not want me in the internet team because I have no attention span to sit down, answer emails, <laughs> check my grammar. Uh, it's just different skill sets. So when you're looking at what you should do, look at what some of these other dealerships have already decided about uh, the way in which they're set up. So we asked uh, how many stores are the non-negotiating philosophy, and I was surprised to see that one in three dealers were the non-negotiating philosophy. I think this is a growing trend because customers are really turned off by the negotiating process. And I see a lot of dealers moving toward uh, where they remove that uncomfortable phase from the, the moment of purchase. Now, those dealerships are really, what I see, tending to bank on repeat and referral customers and getting the service business because they want the fixed offs, the service business. They might not necessarily be the high grossing leaders in the market. So that's a, that's a growing trend is the non-negotiating stores. So in what department is your dealership succeeding? Well, most of us want to be succeeding in the new car unit volume. So knowing that these digital leaders, they're really succeeding in the areas that they want. 
I also want to draw attention to the third one. They've grown their business more than 25%. So we want to know, and then new car growth is uh, shortly after that. Increase, and it's cut off, but it's as increased average monthly visitors. And it was actually, um, I think it was more than 20%, 25% too. So they're doing what they want to be doing. They're selling cars. They're making gross. They are increasing their business, and they're getting more people to their websites. So what do you do significantly better than your competitors? This is the first time in the study where the key components of some of those folks like Good to Great started to come out. And the number one thing that the dealers replied on was customer service. I'm even impressed by the next two, which is retention and transparency. Those are all people-related factors. Well, people are so concerned with being pricing, these dealers don't feel like they are necessarily the best pricing in the market. Uh, unfortunately, also, they don't also feel like they are maybe beating their com um, dealer, uh, competitors in conversion rates, which we'll talk about that. Okay, uh, this rates your, their knowledge of social media products and, and features. And actually, you know, I'm really curious about what type of um, people and education level we have on this survey, so that way the second part of the survey I can customize the information to, uh, based on where you're at in your digital strategy. Eliana, do you have a, a poll for us? Yes, let's do that now. Everyone, we're going to start early with this one poll question. It's really going to be helpful to April. Uh, to carry on for the rest of the webinar. So if you could, please look at your screen, get in front of your, your laptops, your keyboards, and answer this question for us. We want to know, what's your level of digital marketing knowledge? Is it poor? Is it fair? Are you average? <laughs> are you great? Or do you think you are excellent? And of course, if you're excellent, maybe you should contact me. Maybe you could, you know, come over here and give a webinar to some dealerships, but um, we want to know, are you poor, fair, average, excellent, or great? Well, I said that wrong. Anyway, what's your digital marketing knowledge? Once we get a majority of the votes, we'll close the poll and share the results. I want you to know, people are actually writing in, don't write in, vote! <laughs> They're so funny. Joe Webb said he put poor. I just want you to know. <laughs> So people like you that throw off down on the survey. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're like totally throwing off the curve, Joe. All right, I'll tell you what. We are gonna <laughs> we're gonna close the poll and share the results. Are you ready for this, April? Yes, please. No one here is poor. None of them. None of them. But let's see, we got 35% of today's audience say they are great at digital marketing knowledge. 26% say they're excellent and Equal 26% say they're average, and we got a 14% of today's audience that also say that they're fair. So we have a pretty smart audience today. You know, just hearing some of the people that were, uh, when you introduce people as they were coming in, I actually believe that. So uh, that just really motivates me to up my game for the second part of this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I had no doubt that it's going to be amazing. So um, uh, do you have anything else you want to ask the audience, or, or we should get on with this? Because no, I love no, the graphs and charts. I'm all over it. I'll, I'll jump back in. I'm, I'm glad that we're not working with, like, 80% poor, so that, that helps me. <laughs> uh, so when we, when we went into this, I was curious about how dealers would rate their own knowledge. And, you know, this was completely anonymous, so I had just really asked them to be fair uh, about their education level. But these top succeeding dealers, or at least the people that are in charge of the marketing budgets, uh, are rating themselves at average, good, or even excellent in different categories from SEO, SEM, social media conversion rates, marketing, databasing, and behavioral. Okay, so this once again starts to bring out uh, the different aspects of where you see them as leaders. But if they could pick only one area that the dealership could excel at, uh, more than 40% put customer service as the thing that they would choose to excel at. How many hours a month do you spend on training? Now, this is one of those things that it becomes really easy for us to uh, always be putting out fires and never looking at growth. Really successful dealers understand that it, it's important to take time out and uh, focus on how you're going to grow yourself, your team, uh, your dealership, uh, and your marketing. So just even if you look at something like phone training uh, or Joe Webb's on the call, if you look at process training and templates and lead management, you're spending tons of money to get people to your website, to get them into your dealership, to get them into your CRM. Now, from that moment, everything that you do is either 
giving them the reason to buy from you or that's turning them off. And so little things like being better on the phone or having a better way to communicate with your customers online increases your conversion rate of getting them into the store and buying a vehicle. Uh, even people like phone ninjas who uh, help people uh, improve their uh, phone processes, sometimes uh, the uh, CEO, Jerry Thiebaud, will sit in on my presentations and give me a whole list of page notes of like all the things that I could do differently to increase my results and be more effective. And each time I try to take at least one of his <laughs> tips and move that forward. And so understanding that training is a big asset of, of your marketing plan is really essential. And, and some of these dealers are even doing up to 13 to 15 hours a month, which I thought was impressive. So what are they using um, as their kind of educational mediums? The highest was national conferences. Uh, now, th there's, of course, going to be some sliding towards certain people. I know most of these digital leaders because I go to the conferences, and then I meet them, and then I get their email address, and then I send them the survey. So uh, that might have something to do with it. There could be a lot of brilliant people that never attend these conferences, <laughs> and I just don't, I just don't meet them because I'm obviously at the conference. So, uh, But second to that, I was really impressed by webinars. Uh, it, was an, it was after this survey that uh, Eliana asked me to do this webinar, and knowing that that's uh, where the fish are, <laughs> I guess that I decided <laughs> to jump on her bandwagon. Thank but you. I, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a quick and easy way to get information. It's free. It's available. So I, I really like that growing term other than, um, you know, 20 groups is growing newsletters and automotive social sites, obviously. So this is one thing that's fascinating. What percent of your marketing budget is spent online? And I think that this is growing exponentially with dealers all across the country. I had dealers when I did advertising that had very little digital marketing budgets. And if you're an internet manager and you're a marketing manager and you're trying to get funds from the, the dealer or the general manager, sometimes uh, it's really hard because you know that your success is based on their allocations. And so as you're able to make really good cases on you know, where you should be spending your money, it's easier to start getting more money allocated. And when I was with the agency, uh, that was kind of my goal, was to prove my worth. I would spend their money on certain features or products or vendors. I'd watch it, monitor it, and then once I could prove its effectiveness, then I was able to get more budgets allocated for digital. So in this survey, it was showing that, first of all, nobody was less than 10%, thank God. But uh, the highest percent of people spending digital budgets online was about 31 to 40%, but more than three-fourths were above 31%. All the way up to, yes, there are dealers that are 100% digital. Uh, one that's very public about it is Andrew DeFeo with uh, St. Augustine Hyundai. Uh, he has uh, noted last year that he went 100% digital. So there are e-dealers doing it. So how often do you review your vendor's effectiveness? Well, when I was working with dealers, it's, or when I was a vendor, <laughs> more say, it seemed like the dealers uh, always would review my effectiveness when they got my bill. And uh, so they would look at the bill, and then they're like, why are we still paying for this product? And then that was the time that they decided to run reports, and then you come in and you meet with them and uh, try to show them all the things that's working for or against them. Well, really successful dealers, they don't leave it to the after fact. They're watching on a regular and consistent basis. They are uh, anywhere from daily to weekly and very rarely annually. So having that type of focus on a regular basis allows them to be able to notice when there's problems uh, before the problems kind of creep up on them. So this is one of those nosy slides where uh, I'm just, I had the ability to ask people what's working, what's not. I was hoping that maybe I could just see what's working for people and then I could institute maybe those things for some of the dealers I work for. And uh, so for top performing tools, the number one was Carfax. Uh, so I could see what the growing uh, need to be transparent toward consumers, that Carfax is an easy tool to have uh, listed places to, to be able to have that brand confidence. Uh, second by that would be Viato, which for anybody that doesn't know, that's uh, to aggressively price your vehicles online so you're competitive. And then after that, this is the, probably what I took as one of the most compelling out of this, is the live chat internal, which means you do your own live chat, and your live chat outsourced. Uh, somebody does it for you. So if you were to combine those two, live chat would be the number one effective tool that's performing for successful dealers. So I have to tell you, I can see why that that's really relevant. Uh, if you start thinking about all those slides about customer service, live chat is a customer service tool. It is not a closing tool. When people are on your website or if they're on your vehicle detail pages through portals, they have not decided to buy from you. They are still in their research mode. 
But when all of a sudden you give them an ability to ask a question and you can earn their trust, earn their confidence, then those start to become an actual contender or turn into a lead. When I launched Live Chat for our portal, I did it for about 314 franchise dealers, and I really got to monitor the results. And it was um, exponentially one of the best things that we did to increase conversion from a vehicle detail page or a website. The downside is that Live Chat is really difficult to manage on a, on a dealership level. And so when you try to do it internally, uh, once again, we go back to that it's not necessarily a natural skill set for dealers to sit and have conversations. Companies that do it all day long, like Active Engage, they've gotten really efficient with it, and they have templates, and they stay on task, and they treat it like a customer service tool. So I think that uh, I, I like that this was in here for performing tools, but I would really advise dealers to look at it as a customer service tool and really think about they wanted to increase their conversion. How could they launch a live chat process uh, that's really effective? After that, I was really thrilled to see Hook Logic as a, a top performing tool. That is a, uh, it's basically an incentive tool that uh, captures people's attention while they're shopping on your own website and helps them bring them into the showroom. Uh, followed by Haystack, which is a uh, SEM tool that uses your inventory to uh, drive results. I even believe, uh, I don't want to surprise, ruin Eliana's surprise, but I think Haystack is uh, presenting next week. So. That's true, that's true. <laughs> Into that, but Haystack is presenting next week. Actually, Duncan Scary himself is going to be presenting, so that should be a good one too. Actually, Duncan Scary is presenting right now to a, a group of Minnesota dealers. So. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, what are the key factors to your dealership success? So, like I said, I, I really surveyed and I got a number of great uh, responses, which I'll share with you too. But uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with what a word cloud is. Word cloud is where you can take entire sentences or phrases and drop them into a program. And the program will then, whatever word was used more frequently, will make that word bigger. You tend to see it a lot with like SEO uh, or um, you know, different infographs and stuff like that. So after taking all these responses from these different dealers, I just kind of dumped it into this program. And the reoccurring word that came up more often than not when we asked what are the key factors to your dealership success was customer. The dealerships that focus on the customer, followed by management, leadership, service, ownership, uh, innovation, things like that. So I, I thought that this was a, a very graphic picture of, of what successful dealers were doing. That is really cool. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and then what, what was easier than putting in like a hundred different responses down? <laughs> uh, but, uh, what other word, uh, what others would use to describe you? So this is what other people would use to describe the Kevin Fry's or the Andrew DeFeo's or the Jim Bell's. And the reoccurring word, if you draw, drop it all in there, is knowledgeable. Second would be leader, innovative. And just so people know that I'm not uh, falsifying these results, one dealer actually said very heavy drinker. Uh, Sorry, I guess I'm going to a little off here. So, uh, so yes, very heavy drinker. And I actually know that dealer. He is a very heavy drinker. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to obviously read through all these quotes because this is available online. But I really wanted, they took the time to answer. And I, some of these were some of the most compelling messages and thoughts. By the way, there was hundreds of them. So I wish I could have listed them all because I thought they were all insightful and brilliant. Uh, but what I really tried to do is, A, take uh, the one that really summed up, well, I guess the point that we're trying to make, <laughs> uh, but the ones that also have a, a really clear thought of uh, customer service and, and where we're going. So one would be Jim Flint, uh, developing a strategy first, rolling up your sleeves, and going to work second. Execution beats strategy every time, but if you can do both and you have the advantage, you need to be successful. Uh, I try to lead by example. Speed of the leader, speed of the pack. I just really like that. <laughs> what people impact your success? I just really just wanted to list this quote. Everyone I follow on Twitter, in April freaking rain, Jim Bell. Jim Bell, I know you're on the line, so thank you very much. <laughs> I like that one. That he, put it, he put April freaking rain, I love that. <laughs> Um, what had the greatest effect on the way you do business, uh, shopper behavior online and being there during the zero moment of truth, transparency in the industry, the use of technology in the dealership? And then what do you consistently do each day to drive results? Study Google Analytics and monitor if our leads are being handled effectively, 
and I love this, even though it isn't my department. Mm. So as most of us know, uh, you know, there's a lot of different hands working in uh, the kind of the same machine, right? You need good inventory from the used car manager, from the new car manager, you need the right marketing budget, you need the salespeople to be taking the leads. The marketing people don't necessarily have control over the conversion rates or the appointment set, and so it's a lot of different hands. So when somebody says something that I'm monitoring what's happening, even though it's not my department, I think that's really telling because people that really are striving for the same goal, more people that can drop their egos and say, okay, look, we're all going to roll up our sleeves and pitch in, those are the people that have greater results. What bad habits do you have to avoid that are damaging to your success? I think the top one is really... Uh, Common in our industry, uh, a lot of us salespeople, we run around chasing shiny objects, so it's really hard for us to focus on the future because we're always focused on the now, uh, followed by, uh, and these are aggregated, kind of the, the top points from the survey of what people were answering, but followed by pre-qualifying customers, micromanaging, communication, complacency, and yes, one dealer actually said smoking crack, so <laughs> I guess we all have our own issues. <laughs> I, I, I pulled out uh, distractions and complacency because I just really feel like that is probably the easiest one for most of us to fall into. What are the key factors that attribute to your dealership success? Uh, I really like this one. Leadership from the top, transparency and willingness to take risk. Uh, Alan Crutch with Walzer Automotive Group recently won the Innovative uh, Idea Award from Driving Sales. It was a uh, um, hundreds of dealers across the country submitted great ideas. He got picked as one of the five panelists and then one from that. So I pretty much think that if dealers uh, are coming up with in innovative ideas and beating out other dealers throughout the country, I kind of want to listen to what that dealer is doing. <laughs> so. What aspects of the business are you most passionate about? Digital, training, reputation, management, customer service, leadership, and people. I really want to emphasize the word passionate here. The reality is, is for you to excel at anything, you have to enjoy it. You have to want to do it. If anything that I've talked about today is part of your job and it is painstaking and you despise it, you're probably not in the right industry. Uh, I have people all the time ask me, is what you do really specific to automotive? And I think about it and I'm like, well, no, not really. Uh, digital marketing can pertain to any industry. And so they ask, why automotive? And I don't know if it's just that I'm some sort of weird masochist, but I love car dealers. I, I think they are some of the most honest, genuine, loyal, upfront people I've ever met. They can be very stubborn and thick-headed, but for the most part, they appreciate when somebody helps them. They appreciate growth, and they will be your testimonial and your friend and your support till the end. And so I have great passion for what I do, and I think people see that. And then that's why I have uh, some fantastic people on this webinar is, is because I think I, I emphasize that kind of passion in my work. So hopefully, you know, when you're thinking about your work, you know, hopefully you're in the right place or, <laughs> or maybe get out. So why do dealerships fail? This was an aggregate of all their responses, but the, the most reoccurring themes were greed, ego, laziness, fear, lack of customer service, inflexibility, and unable to adapt. I think this is kind of the key here. I think that the people that are not willing to move into uh, a digital day and age, those are the ones that are going under. And so what is your definition of a successful dealership? I just really want to pull out, you know, consistent, repeat and referral business, one that doesn't focus on, one that does right by their employees and their customers and not just focuses on short term profits. Has good customer services and continuous improvement. Great things. So in summary, successful dealers really focus on customer service and they're really knowledgeable and they monitor the results. Okay, great. How do they do that? <laughs> it's, all well, it's all well and good to know. Now how? Well, to be honest, they start with a strategy in place. We're one of the few industries that just starts running around doing things without having a plan. If you were building a house tomorrow, uh, you wouldn't just run to Home Depot and start throwing things into your cart uh, and then throwing it in a big pile and trying to slap it together. I mean, maybe I would, but <laughs> for the most part, that's, it doesn't have a really good process in place. Uh, you, would, you would make a blueprint. You would sit there and say, okay, this is what we need, this is the resources, this is what we have, and then you'd start moving forward. So let's look at what a blueprint entails. How to become a successful dealer in three easy steps. If infomercials have taught me anything, if you say the word easy and you make it only three steps, then people will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so how do you uh, create a digital strategy and become a leader? Well, one, you have to start by getting organizing and prioritizing. Uh, for example, you know, whenever I have to help my husband clean out the garage, you go and look at it and you're just overwhelmed. You're just like, oh my God, where do I even start? So you really start by pulling all your things together, looking at it, just making a plan and deciding what you're going to do. From there, you need to be able to monitor, benchmark, and review. You also need to know your technologies. It's super easy for uh, the decision makers to say, oh, the internet guy's got that. Or maybe you're the internet guy <laughs> and somebody else is running your IT or somebody else is running your social. You really have to have a good handle on what your technologies are. I already communicated that you need to focus on training. And I would say it might just help read good to great. <laughs> it was enough to inspire me. It might, uh, might do the same for you. And then after that, you have to be able to take your strategy and move it forward. All the best ideas without taking any action are useless, uh, which means no matter what your role is, you have to motivate. If you're the internet manager, you have to motivate the dealer. If you're the dealer, you have to motivate your staff. It's all about getting things done in a positive way. You have to lead by example, and once again, stay focused. So first of all, how do you get organized? This is a, a template that I've used for dealers. Uh, I know David Kane has a version, Brian Pash has a version. You don't need to buy anybody else's template. I even said I'll give it away at the end of today. Uh, you can also make your own. This is Excel. It's not any fancy software. But just your CRM doesn't tell you everything you need to know. In fact, it tells you a very small piece. Your, your CRM only tells you the lead that came in at the end of the day. You need to know what's happening with your traffic. Your traffic is what's telling you uh, what is moving through, um, getting you the sources and the leads that you, you need. So your, your CRM is only going to tell you after the fact. Analytics are only going to tell you your traffic. Nobody's really connecting the dots. I wish there was a magical dashboard, and I've talked with multiple companies. There's no company that aggregates all this information. So unfortunately, a lot of it still has to be done manually but also pulling your budget together. So many dealers kind of go into their month, go into their year, and don't really have a set and communicated budget. Uh, you want to be able to sit there and say, okay, great, I've got a great, you know, I want my customer, my cost of customer acquisition to be X. We want to sell about X amount of cars, which means we need to spend about X amount on advertising to achieve that. And then you need to monitor to make sure that you're getting the results from each of those areas. Now, one thing to think about, if you are in charge of the marketing budget, Time and time and time again, I see dealers focusing on the wrong part of their budget. It's kind of an inverted pyramid. You're spending a lot of money on traffic and very little on retention. Retention has a higher close rate and gives you a lower cost of customer acquisition. And more dealers spend more money on traffic than they do getting their own customers back and through the door, either through service or leases or uh, expired um, uh, financing, things like that. So look at your budget and make sure that you're allocating correctly to your repeat and referral business. And just so if I could stop you real quick, are th is this part of the free organizational templates that you're giving away to everyone today? Yes. So ah. this, is looking at, this is an Excel. That, so the three, slide, the three next slides is an Excel that I created to help my dealers get organized. And it also comes with a, um, an annual budget to organize your annual budget. So yes, that's, this is what I would be giving people. Okay, just want to remind everyone, you got to go to dealerevents.com and sign up for a membership to get this stuff. It's awesome. Thank you so much, April. Sorry. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Uh, second would be organizing your vendors. A lot of the times they're written on Post-its and have cards all over the place. Being able to have all your vendors in one place makes it really easy. Uh, another thing that really kind of sucks the time out of a day is having 20 million vendors show up and try to talk to you or pitch you or go over your reports. Uh, when I did marketing for dealers, all I did was um, I put all, this, all their vendors on a schedule. And show, so I'd say, you know, okay, great, cars.com is here, Edmunds is here. And then therefore it kind of frees up your time so you're not being bombarded by people. The second part is, as you'll see, like maybe about six uh, columns down, uh, report portal. So you actually put in the URL to your landing page, whether it's, you know, AutoTrader or Edmunds or your Facebook page. It makes it really easy for you to maybe once a month, once a week, to click on those and just look at your branding real quick. Just sit there and say, okay, great, what are we doing? Uh, does it look right? Is our phone number correct? Is our map correct? Is our inventory correct? Are our pictures correct? It just saves a lot of time. So you're able to stay efficient and work on your branding just really quickly, uh, as frequently as you need to. Reputation management template, it's really difficult to stay ahead of your reputation. So putting your reputation all in one place to sit there and say, okay, great, this is what we're doing. This is the point person. I say point person because a lot of people like kind of do that crossed fingers approach where I thought he was doing it. I thought he was responding. I thought he was watching Google Alerts. So I think it's 
important that you say, okay, great, this is what we're doing, this is the point person, this is how many reviews we have, this is uh, the login and password, because sometimes when those people leave, half the time people, dealers can't even log into their own Google account to be able to respond. I know so that. having everything in one place and well articulated is really key. Okay, so how do you build your strategy? Well, basically, this is what I do for dealers when I start working with them. I pull all the decision makers and the support people into one room because it's key that everybody agrees and everybody's looking at the same things. The dealer, I, I was reading this book, <laughs> uh, so many decisions are made by the hippo, and the hippo is the highest paid person's opinion. So uh, there's a lot of times that the, the dealer owner may not always know the best things for the store because maybe the internet manager really understands the, uh, the lead report, but everybody needs to be on the same page. So I pull everybody into a room and I start asking them a series of questions. And basically that will determine what our weaknesses are, what do we need to fix, what are our areas of opportunity. So basically you t all you have to do is ask yourself what you need to fix and then you need to fix it. So we ask questions like, are we managing our inventory? Are we buying the right vehicles at the right price? Are we marketing our vehicles correctly? Are we addressing our online analytics? How are we doing compared to our marketplace? How are we doing with our staffing? Are we adequate staff? Uh, is our staff trained to engage the online customer? Who is responsible for management and implementation of our digital goals? How effective, are, effective is our technology? I hate to say it, I probably have about a couple hundred questions <laughs> that I ask dealers when uh, I really do a deep dive because I really have to understand their business for me to understand what I need to fix. So that's what you want to be doing for yourself. What do we need to fix? Based on your answers, you guys start to make a checklist. Great. We need to look at our staffing, we need to do this, we need to do our marketing, we need to maximize our conversion rates, and you start making your, your goals, your wish list, your checklist. And now half the dealers would just take that checklist and like just try to go do it all at once. And then they would burn out and then they become alcoholics and then they don't want to do anymore. So. <laughs> so the best way to keep your sanity is to divide this out throughout the year. So either take the things you can fix quickly and move it up, or the things that have the biggest impact on your success and, and your ability to sell cars. And you move that to the front, and you basically say, okay, and you have to look at your year. So if you're making this a January through December calendar, you need to be able to say, okay, great. We have the most time, say January, February, or December. You don't want to be launching a new CRM in the middle of July because when you're really just trying to focus on sales and conversion rates. So look at your year and see when do we have the most downtime and some of the bigger more tedious projects at that time, and sit there and say, okay, well, here, we're going to take some of the easier products. So, for example, I would put most of the aggressive training during the summer, because that is when you want people at their sharpest and, and, and doing the best with customers, either online or on the phone or in person. And then once you have all that information, you've filled out your template, you've run your reports, uh, you have all of your vendors in one place, you have your action items, and you have your annual calendar of how you're going to address things, Literally, I go to, and actually there's uh, one of the dealers on the phone, Nick Anderson, I, he can attest to this. I went to Target, I bought a red notebook, <laughs> and uh, I put all of their information in it, and I make them, I pinky promise them that they have to keep that right on their desk, because it gets so easy to be very ambitious, very motivated to have a great plan, and then completely forget about it and dismiss it. So what I do is, uh, before I leave the dealership, I make them schedule a monthly review of their digital strategy. And all the people that went into making this process and the checklist, they are all held accountable to attend that meeting. And they have to sit there and say, okay, great. What did we decide were our areas of weakness? What were we gonna do about it? Did we accomplish that? Yes, no, do we cross it off the list and we keep moving forward? Did we add new things? Did something change? Constantly update your list, but stay focused on it. So the second part was, digital customer service, right? So when you pull all your information together, you're organized, well, those strong, successful dealers really focused on the customer. And so now that we know that most of our customers are online, how do they achieve great customer service? If you look around at big business right now, you're gonna see that some of them are doing it really well and some of them are doing it poorly. There's lots of brick and mortars that are going under and there's lots of brick and mortars that are thriving, like the Best Buys and the Targets. They've really been able to figure out how to transcend uh, the digital customer into a live experience. So how do you do that? You listen to the digital customer. It, uh, it is no longer about what us, the, cons uh, the, the company wants, it's about what the consumer wants. 
And so you ha really have to fight. We, do we want high grosses? Yes. <laughs> do we want to hide the information and make them come in? And maybe, maybe some people want to do that. I don't want to do that. But uh, it's no longer about what we want. It's about what they want. So you have to listen to what they want. You have to create surveys. You have to secret shop. You have to monitor and respond to reviews. You have to be watching your social media conversations. Uh, you have to engage the customer. How do you do that? You do that with easy site navigations, transparent pricing, clear vehicle descriptions, live chat, convenient mobile site layouts, and a great, enjoyable experience. So how do you do that, and how do you know what consumers want? Well, they tell you with every click. That is their way of saying, either you are building my trust or you are turning me off. So at its basic, the things that you should be monitoring are your visits, your unique visitors, your page views, duration, bounce rates, referring sources, and conversion rates. I recently went to a conference in San Francisco. It was a search engine strategies conference outside of automotive. And uh, Google's chief evangelist steps out. And he's kind of this, like, geeky Indian dude. <laughs> and so at first I was like, oh, God, it's 8 in the morning. I'm thinking I'm like, way too tired to be watching a, uh, a session or a keynote on analytics. Well, he walks out, and he just starts with this very loud and energetic and boisterous vo uh, voice saying that web analytics is entirely about customer service. And of course I freeze because I just got done doing the survey and I'm trying to think about how to put it together in a presentation and now my eyes are open. I'm like, really? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I actually got the book. That's the proof of me getting it. And I actually read it. Uh, if anybody knows me, for somebody to watch me read a 300 page book on analytics, nobody would ever, ever bet money that I would do that, but I did. <laughs> And I really got to see what he was talking about in regards to how analytics will tell you what your customers like and what you don't, and if, uh, if you're really building that kind of brand and trust. It also plays in line with uh, one of the things that I've read um, that's echoed in my brain for uh, probably the last three or four years now. I had a, a, a dealer that uh, basically had said he's an old football coach, and he told me, uh, April, I don't know if I'm winning if I don't know the score thought about that and one of the very first analogies in this book says you're basically you're driving in a car going down you're driving and the windows are painted black so you can't see outside your car but you look at the speedometer and it's reading 75 miles per hour so you panic and you think oh my god I'm speeding but then somebody starts to scrape away that black paint and all of a sudden you're in a NASCAR race and everybody else is going 200 miles an hour Hmm. And all of a sudden, when you thought you were going too fast, you are now going too slow. And that is kind of like the aha about analytics and knowing the score. So for example, this book says, there's six true ways to measure your website. One being clickstream. That is like Google Analytics. Most do this, if at all. After that, there's multiple outcome testing. That's like A-B testing or multivariate testing. Experiment and testing. Voice of the customer, which could be as easy as those uh, surveys or asking customers. I sometimes just get like my mom to look at my website and say, hey, what do you think? As somebody outside of my industry, what do you see? And then after that, competitive analysis and insight. So we're going to quickly go through competitive analysis since I know that we're creeping up on our time. So one, you need to know what's happening with your own website for you to even understand how you're trending. So lots of dealers that sit there and say, okay, great, I've got 6,000 unique visitors. Well, that's great because the national average is 4,500. Okay, that's good. But is it still good if its competitor has 8,000, 10,000? It's not. The other thing is, is you have to look at your unique visitors in relationship to your page views uh, and your searches. On average, it takes somebody visiting your website two times before they take action. So you want to be watching your ratios to how many people are coming to your site, how many new people, how many repeat visitors, and how many uh, searches and, and page views are happening. You also need to watch your de detailed vehicle page. You want to know that you are getting your vehicles in front of the right people X amount of time in a month and watching that trending. So if you always take a dive at a certain time in the year, there might be something that has to do with your market specific. It might not just be weather conditions or inventory or OEM stimulus. So understanding your own patterns is going to give you a bigger picture. Also being able to address the right customer at the right time. Uh, for example, this is Shopper's profile. The very first one shows that there's a shopper that was in the market for 42 days, and he's been to your website six times before you submitted a lead. Now, 
if you don't sell that customer a Ford F-150, you are just not a very good salesperson. <laughs> that person is obviously very interested in buying a vehicle. If they've been to your website six times before they submitted a lead in 42 days. Uh, you can also get insights as to, like, look at the first person. They were in their market 312 days ago. They've been to your website six times before they submitted a lead. So that person was most likely looking for a vehicle. Maybe it's November, like it is now. They wanted a new vehicle but decided to push it off. Maybe this year they're thinking their car isn't going to make another make it through another winter. Uh, you can tell I'm in the Midwest because I'm talking about weather being a condition. Uh, and so you need to understand, like, okay, why was that person looking for a car a year ago, didn't buy, and now he's looking again? Gives you insights. Having the right vehicles at the right time uh, is, is helpful to making sure that you're addressing the customer's needs. And everybody that's seen the zero moment of truth and knows that dealers that are looking at 18 plus websites uh, before they make a decision, anywhere between six to a year out, means that they're spending a lot of time getting information. If you're only looking at your own website and your CRM, you're not looking at the big picture of how customers are actually getting information about you. So you have to think at every step of the way, they're deciding, do they want your brand? Do they want your uh, make and model? Do they want to buy from you? And so only looking at a very narrow scope doesn't give you that big picture. So one, being able to compare it to the market. How many people are in the market to buy your brand? How many people are in the market in the nation to buy a vehicle? And how many people are shopping your website? How are you doing? In, in this regard, you can see the blue is the dealer, the red is the DMA, the yellow is the brand, and the green is nationwide, which means this dealer is killing it nationwide in nationwide comparison. You can also see in comparison to his DMA, he's killing it, and compared to his brand, he's killing it. Those are impactful numbers, right? And, and a lot of the times when you look at if sales are down, you're not asking the right question. You need to know at what point did the chain break? Did the salespeople convert less appointments? Did the web, your website or your lead providers provide less leads? Did your website have less traffic to generate less uh, leads to go into the CRM? Did your marketplace have less shoppers? Did your OEM do less stimulus so there's less people looking at your brand? Or is overall in the nation sales down? And that will start to give you an idea of what you need to fix and why you need to fix it. So if you know that first they're looking at these 18 plus sites and your branding needs to be as in many places as possible because uh, everywhere they look they need to have a positive reinforced message that you're somebody that they want to do business with. From there they trickle down to website and direct referrals and then from there into your CRM. This is proven because if you look at your keyword searches you're going to see that for, more, for most dealers more than half will say no keyword use. And since we all know that people don't magically wake up and then all of a sudden just like decide that to walk into a dealership or magically just go straight to their browser and pull you up, that means they're getting your branding from up some other source. So if you're only looking at direct referrals, once again, that's only a, a portion. Because if, let's use uh, Edmunds as an example. If somebody was uh, shopping on Edmunds' site and then they went to your site and then they left your site, went home, talked to their family about it, it went back to your site, well, you think that person just magically found you. You have no idea that the true referring source was admins.com or cars.com. So understanding where people are shopping and giving your traffic a value is going to really help uh, start to give you that, uh, that full picture. So how do you do that? Remember this slide, the cost per view. Less and less leads are being submitted through portals through your own website. Uh, so it's more important to look at how many people are looking at your inventory. And then based on that, how much does it cost to get eyeballs on my inventory? And then out of that, how much uh, do I convert? So I look at, great, amongst all my portals, I'm spending this much money, I'm getting this many people to look at my inventory, divide that by a cost per view, that typically drives about X amount of traffic via phone calls, walk-ins, live chats, and based on that, that's what I close. Things like social media, I tend not to focus on likes or fans or... Uh, but I tend to look at impressions. I want to see how often uh, my brand is being perpetuated and generated. I care more about engagement and influence than I necessarily do fans. Fans don't help me at all. You know, likes don't necessarily help me at all. But seeing that people are participating, maybe seeing that people are sharing photos of the cars I took or of my happy customers or my testimonials, that is what I care about. That is branding. So uh, I want to be able to give you guys some of the places that I go for information. There's no real like degree in automotive digital marketing. It's not like you can go to Harvard and get like an MBA in digital marketing advertising for automotive. Not uh, so yet. Not, not yet. yet. 
Uh, oh, great. Then I have to go back to school. <laughs> But right now, I, these are some of my really trusted sources. Companies like HubSpot, Marketo, Mashables, Marketing Sherpa, Dealer Refresh, uh, Search Engine Watch, they all provide uh, free white papers and information. Uh, you can really stay current. And I, I have to say it, with, with a handful of a few really trusted sources, uh, he's on the call, Joe Webb being one of them, uh, you know, I tend to look sometimes outside of our industry when it comes to digital marketing, at least to be able to teach myself how to ask the really good questions. Uh, remember, most of the vendors are former salespeople, car salespeople, so they know what we want to hear. But doesn't mean they don't have um, bad products. I think most of the the dealer or the vendors out there have great products. But you want to teach yourself how to ask really good questions, so you're finding the right product for you. Being as that we saw that webinars was a, a hot spot, uh, this is my social media site. It is new. It's a BEB site, so of course. Uh, it's a, it's a work in progress, but uh, anybody that does become a member today, which is totally free, uh, I will email out my marketing template. In addition, this is a great place for you to find any place that has like events or uh, anything that's happening in an automotive. We're working with Dealer Refresh on, on powering our blog. Uh, so it's just meant to be uh, a free, easy social place for people to go. Um, no strings, really. Uh, and then always keep growing. Uh, always aim for something new. Always see what's uh, on the horizon. Just this morning, <laughs> just this morning, you guys can even see it. It's 8, 10 a.m., and you guys can go back and look. Guy Kawasaki posted this tweet, 10 professions most and least likely to employ psychopaths. <laughs> and so I click on the link, and there's this book, The Wisdom of Psychopaths, What Saints, Spies, and Serial Killers Can Teach Us About Success. So who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have to move on and do another survey. Okay, I, I just have to seriously say I love Guy Kawasaki. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why, like, it caught my attention. So, uh, sales, sales is one of the top ten professions that yield a psychopath. Just saying. Wait, most likely or least likely? Most. Yeah. Most sales, sales, because we're so charismatic and kind of crazy. If anybody knows me, they'll probably say anyway. Oh yeah, psychopath okay. in the making. Got it. <laughs> But a smart one. Perhaps, <laughs> and, and stylish, too. So fabulous. Right, right here. So nice. Uh, and I really like this quote. To succeed in life, we must stay in our strength zones, but continually move outside of our comfort zone. So with that, I want to thank everybody for letting me uh, rant for about 50 minutes. And I hope that this was somewhat useful. And uh, I think Eliana is going to move on to a few other things. But I will stay on for any questions. April. That was fabulous. Thank you so much, my God. I told everyone there was a lot of information here. And we're not done yet, too, because we do have some really, really pointed questions coming in from our audience. But I do want to remind the audience that uh, Digital Rain, of course, is going to be giving away so much stuff. So we're going to start right now. First of all, I want to remind you the free organizational templates and example strategy questions. They are priceless. All you have to do is go to dealerevents.com and sign up for a membership that's free anyway, and you're going to get those sent over to you. The Datium Analytics, oh my gosh, they, they just tell you so much. So uh, I think at last count, Datium is somewhere around nine or 10,000 dealerships. Uh, that have these analytics, and so it really helps you gauge what your dealership is doing compared to everyone else. It's really, really fascinating stuff. It's $99 a month. She's giving it to you for free. Hello. Well, so, technically, they're giving it away. <laughs> okay, they're giving it away. Either way, um, there's the code right there. It's D-Rain. Could you have a cooler name, April? Seriously, April Rain? Really? I, I can buy one. That's <laughs> That's way up there. Okay, so if you want to get those analytics, there's the code right there. You go to Datium and then enter that code and bam, you got it all on there. Oh, look, people are already writing in. Thank you. Now, we are now going to give away the big prize, which is one free hour of digital marketing, consulting, and training with April Rain herself. This is a, a prize valued at $200. And with this, it's going to give your dealership a chance to have April go through your current digital marketing strategy and check out your websites, your social media, your CRM, or you can use that time to get trained on how to really delve into the analytics. And either way, you're going to be helped immensely. All you have to do, oh, it's pretty simple, I'm going to let you know, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is be the first one 
to write in the correct response to the question I'm about to ask. That's all you have to do. First one to write in the correct response is going to win this totally awesome prize. So get ready. Get in front of your keyboards. Here we go. April, you ready for this? Do you have anything else you want to say before I try and give this away? <laughs> No, no, you got me all hyped up. Now I'm anxious. <laughs> yes, the correct response, Kevin. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Here's the question. First one to type in the correct response or, or closest to the right answer, let's say, is going to win the prize. Here we go. Ready? As of 2010, how many franchise dealerships are in the United States? How many franchise dealerships are in the United States? We have lots of answers. Oh, somebody has. We have a winner. We have a winner. We have a oh, winner. Wow. You can stop writing in. They have the exact correct response. I just want you to know, this was in like one of the very first slides that April showed. Very, very first one. So thank you. Boy, everyone was answering this question. They all wanted it. So the winner is Brendan Hughes, who answered correctly with 17,700. Congratulations, Brendan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he says, what up, gangsters? Okay, Brandon, write in and let us know what your dealership name is so we can give a proper shout-out to you, dude. All right, congratulations, and thank you, everyone, for playing along. We do appreciate it. He is with Muzi Ford in Needham, Massachusetts. So right. there you go. Brandon, oh, Muzi. Did I not say that right? Muzi? Muzi? Brandon. Uh, Brandon's trying to correct me. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. That's awesome. <laughs> Mozzie? Oh, Brendan's writing Mozzie now. I don't know what I'm doing over here, Brendan. I'm just, you know, I'm a hired hand over here. Uh, <laughs> Tom wrote in, can we purchase the prize for $200? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you and I, we'll talk later, okay, my friend? And Adam, don't go anywhere. He's like, he's already thanking us for a great presentation. Guess what? we got some questions to get to over here. I want to start off with this question that came in from Adam. Um, he, came, he wrote in early, early, early. He wanted to know, in one of the um, earlier uh, graphs that you had wrote in, Adam wrote in, are you measuring CSI or online reviews when you refer to customer service? So uh, that's a great question, Adam. So this was all perception based by the dealer. So when they were talking about things that they excel at, it's all perception, right? So we obviously, it's not like I could go to his dealership and then see if I obviously experienced great customer service, and then I could say, you, sir, do not have great customer service. You, should, you marked incorrectly on my survey. So it's all based on perception, which is, is a little bit of the kind of the point. You want the philosophy. So I'm sure those dealers hope that they are doing as well of a good job with their CSI, their reputation management. I can tell you in some of the cases, I know I know a lot of the dealers, uh, obviously I reached out to them because I knew that they were personally really successful. Uh, some of the ones that you saw on that front screen there, the Kevin Fry, the Andrew DeFeos, the uh, Mike Groves, the Jim Bells, uh, all those people, yeah, I can testimonial that they also, uh, they win dealership awards uh, for excellence. They have top reviews in their marketplace. Uh, Andrew DeFeo uh, had to even kind of dial his back. He had something like 500 positive reviews, and nobody actually believed that they were real, and they were. So uh, here in Minneapolis, uh, anybody that's a Rydell dealer, which is like Apple or St. Paul Autos, uh, they are known for phenomenal customer service. They, uh, they just really treat dealers or consumers right. Uh, they even have mottos like, uh, we never take advantage of a customer even when we can. And those are just some of their internal uh, mottos. So I hope that, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> and of course, Adam, if you have a follow-up question, please write in and let us know. Next question comes to us from Bill. Now, uh, April, I warned you, my customers, they don't pull any punches. They are going to ask you the tough questions. Mm -hmm. Bill is, uh, is already starting. He, and by the way, I want you to move the slide over to your, your mugshot slide. Your pretty mugshot. Look how pretty April is. Okay, Bill wants to know, how do you leverage a customer service strategy in branding and marketing? I mean, seriously, could you get any tougher of a question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, we, we went through a lot of information really fast, and obviously each part of these have multiple aspects of it. But a customer service strategy really starts with, one, like I said, the transparency of it. 
So when we sat there and said that as people are moving, moving through the research portal, every place that you are has to have a clear, concise, and positive message about who you are. So if you have to think that if they are on, um, if they're on Google, obviously it's the reviews. If they're on your vehicle detail page, there's so many things there that can instill trust and confidence. One, being clear pricing. Two, being easy contact information. Uh, three, being maybe your testimonials are listed right on your vehicle detail page. Uh, multiple pictures, videos, live chat. All of those things are saying, hey, look, we care about you, the customer. We want to make it easy for you to get a hold of us. We want to give you all the information so you don't have to hunt for it. Uh, if there are, if you have video testimonials, people love to be able to see uh, kind of the, the from the, the mouths of babes, like you know who's saying what. Look, there's actual people that said positive things uh, in the social media realm. Uh, it's important for you to at least have a nice message, kind of uh, like an elaborate about us. I don't put massive emphasis on social media strategies in the sense that like I don't think you should spend all day on it. But I think that that is where people are at, and I think that showing your customer service in all aspects of your marketing by just giving the customer what they want, and that tends to be just make it easy, make it convenient. That's what we all want in life. I'm a mama too. You make it easy, you make it convenient, you save me time, and you're helpful and polite, you earn my business. So uh, if absolutely. you want more of an elaborate answer, I can go on, but give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Bill already wrote in, love you, April, and uh, he says it's important that dealers hear more about this. So absolutely agreed. Bill, thank you so much for the really fantastic question. Let's move on to another fantastic question from Adam. He says, what if your salespeople don't know how to source their walk-in or phone-up customers? This goes back to when you were saying um, uh, earlier in your presentation how uh, people, how dealerships were only um, concentrating on spending money on the traffic, but not on the follow, you know, on the on the current customers. Mm -hmm. I think you were saying that. So that's around the same time when he wrote that in. Okay, so uh, you know, just kind of quickly to reiterate. You know, when I did marketing for dealers, or I guess I still do, uh, I do more education now, but when I was really responsible for their budget, I never got a nice little report that said, here's my walk-in traffic. Uh, you know, I think dealerships always want that goal. Uh, from what I hear, the future will be fencing, where um, everybody that has a mobile device, when they walk through a invisible fence set by the dealership, they will be able to to monitor all the uh, cell phones that walk through. <laughs> uh, so maybe in about like five years after we get through privacy laws, <laughs> we'll be able to track really accurately for our traffic. But for right now, I hate to say it, it almost doesn't matter the source. And this is going to sound horrible, but here's why. Uh, if I know that I am consistently spending money in these places, and I know that that means it's yielding this many people looking at my inventory via vehicle detail pages, or via reviews, or via Facebook, and I see that it takes me so much time to get X amount of people to look at my inventory. And then my typical conversion of that branding, it took them, you know, looking at Edmonds and AutoTrader and Cars.com and Facebook and YouTube and the OEM sites and the enthusiast sites and KBB and all these different places. After I see that I spent this much money to get this many eyeballs, that generally yields this many people coming to my website or coming into my store. If you track this long enough, you aren't surprised by the outcome. You know I spend my money here, and here's how it changes the different aspects, as long as you're also monitoring your lead to close from a salesperson, because they're kind of the wildfires. Uh, everything from a marketing can be really uh, uh, systematic. Salespeople are still salespeople, so you can kill your entire conversion rate by losing a top salesperson or adding a top. So, but monitoring all this will always tell you where your weak link is. Agreed. Thank you so much for that. And Adam, certainly if you have a follow-up question, please write in and let us know. Let's move on to the next question, which comes to us from Andrew. Andrew wants to know, how can a dealer track their analytics comparing to other, I'm going to guess to other dealerships, to brand, national, etc.? Is that in Google? So, no, it is not. So those screenshots, all those screenshots are datum. Uh, and, and Eliana said that they were on about eight to 9,000 dealerships. I actually recently talked to Datum, and now remember, each dealership can have more than one website. I think around 14,000 actual websites. Whoa, that is a lot. <laughs> well, 
also, they're also getting all the analytics from cars.com, soon to be Edmonds, uh, and a couple, and, and all Nissan, so they have a lot of uh, OEM relationships. So they're getting vast amounts of data. So there's no way that Google can have unless they have comparison sources. You know, I'm, I don't work for Datium. I don't get anything from Datium. They're not a referring partner. They don't pay me. What I get out of this is that uh, I get insights. They allow me to give something free to people. If I'm going to use their screenshots, then it's kind of mean to charge them <laughs> if I'm going to use the screenshots. So I want you to be able to have those analytics for free. What they get out of it is obviously more data uh, and, and more dealerships to be able to compare against. If you're already a dealer on client or you're already a Nissan, you're probably already coded. All you just need is access to it. Uh, so, no, so that those market comparisons go toward um, our Datium screenshots. Google does not give you that. Gotcha. And, and like we said earlier, grab that code, put it on your site, and start getting the answers that you really want to know about, right? Yeah. And, and then I also look at, honestly, if you were talking about, if, I, if you really wanted to get specific, I look at uh, sites like compete.com, where you can look at your competitor's traffic in comparison to yours. They can be off by about like 25% because of the way that uh, uh, analytics read uh, unique users or uh, read visitors. Uh, but it'll give you a good idea of how you're doing against your competitors. I, I really like Compete.com. Very easy to use, too. And uh, mm -hmm. you can sign up for the, um, the uh, higher, uh, you know, the premium, which, of course, there's a charge for. But most of what they do is, is free. So, yeah. um, Andrew, I hope that helped you out. Certainly, if you have another follow-up question, let us know. Okay, this question comes from Kim. What does DMA mean? I, I don't remember seeing that in your slideshow. Did you use the oh, term DMA? Yep, it's actually in the uh, analytics. Uh, great question, Kim. It is your uh, designated marketing area. Ah. So, yep, so DMA is, uh, so sorry about that. We, we skipped through a lot of it, and there's a lot of acronyms. In fact, uh, I, I think I'm going to publish this blog pretty soon here that it's like um, the, the, the automotive guide to terminology because we use so many. It's like SEO and SEM and uh, DMA. So designated marketing areas, technically uh, DMAs were determined by TV companies so that way they knew what area to broadcast to. So DMAs were divided by um, Nelson Company for uh, TV, but now we still tend to use it so we can uh, determine what your general marketing area is. Oh, see, now I knew what PMA was, and I was like, oh, so it's kind of the same, right? Yeah, DMA is like more the official term from like your your designated marketing area. Uh, so, and like I said, it's it's typically based on the the guidelines that TVs had certain broadcast reaches to, uh, based on like their their satellite. So. Ah, well, Kim, I hope that helped you out. She already wrote in. Thank you. How about that? Okay, our next question. Well, it's not. I don't know if this is a question. It's more of a statement. Ray Fenster. He wrote in. When are you going to do video good to great? <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to talk about that because I want that on my webinar. <laughs> I know. You know what's funny is uh, I was actually, I wanted to do, because I Skype a lot. I Skype and I FaceTime and uh, I really like connecting with people. So at first I was thinking about asking Eliana uh, if I could do the webinar with like video, like FaceTime, and anybody else that wanted to, then they could put it up. And uh, But then I realized I'd have to actually... Um, Put on my makeup, and I decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do that. I'll make you sing karaoke, so we won't do that. <laughs> All right, next. What? What were you oh, going to okay. say? It's going to be a whole series of you know. I do want to really uh, kind of continue to grow on this, and uh, you know, make a series of. Um, educational videos uh, along with uh, I'm now doing like local summits with dealer associations so we'll be able to do more of a deep dive when we, we come to different marketplaces. <laughs> Our winner Brendan says yes to karaoke by the way I just want you to know. Okay let's move on we do have a few more questions to get to and I know we're already way past the top of the hour so we're gonna try and squeeze as many as we can and thank you guys for hanging on with us let's keep plowing along. Next question comes to us from Michael he says I've got a question for April we're a large New England dealership group with eight dealerships. However, we're not very advanced with an internet marketing team. I'm actually the only content manager for the group. What is the best way to advance our group using the techniques you recommend? Now, Michael, before April answers, I'm just going to say, April's for hire. But, <laughs> <laughs> but April, go ahead. What were you going to say? <laughs> So one would be uh, 
that is rough. I mean, that's, that's, um, and some of it is a stain within, you know, we say you should only take so many leads per internet manager. I mean, some of it too is, is, you know, I did all these summits where I'd ask people like, okay, you know, tell me what, who you are and what you do. And so many people were like, well, I'm the internet manager, but I also take the pictures and, you know, run the lot. And, you know, like nowadays we're trying to operate entire businesses on such little resources. Uh, to be the only content manager for eight stores, I'd say you need to get really efficient at syndicating. So you need to have as many automated processes as possible, right? Because you have to think every minute sucked away to inefficiencies is just costing you the ability to get your job done. So for you, you know, I would say you really won your strategy because that's going to keep you organized. Keeping you organized will always save time. Uh, and then two, setting up a uh, um, automation for all of your social media, setting up automation, like I said, those, uh, man, those setting up those uh, designated times that you meet with vendors so you're not bombarded and you're not spending half your day trying to hide from people under your desk. And then, uh, you know, just having your reports pulled into clean and easy dashboards. So at a glance, you can sit there and see, you know, here's how we're doing with different aspects. It'll also easily show you red flags when you'll all of a sudden you see something drop. Uh, then it's more of the indicator that something's going wrong versus you always having to go and look. So um, that would probably be my initial feedback is just getting organized, syndicating all of your information, syndicating meaning you put it in one place and it blasts it to multiple, multiple places, and then having things feed into dashboards that make it really easy for you to monitor really quickly and efficiently. Yeah, and Michael, hire some help for Pete's sake. Gosh, eight dealerships, my goodness. Some people are having trouble just doing one. So... <laughs> And, and obviously, April's contact information is right there, Michael. So if you want to follow up with her later on and get some more information and more help from April, I'm sure she'd be willing to help you, right, April? Yeah, it, yeah, I would. But also, there's a lot of companies out there that, you know, I hate to say it, that if somebody, if somebody can do it better than I can or better than the dealership, then by all means, pay for it, right? So take live chat. If you know your salespeople are not going to be good at chat and they don't have the time and the resources and you don't have the ability to manage it, outsource it. Either do contact at once or active engages uh, BDC. Or if you can't do your social media, outsource it. If, I mean, I'm just a big component of giving. I don't lose control because you, it's still your money, your name on the line, which means you need to monitor aggressively. But still, if somebody can do it cheaper and better than your own staff and it frees up that time for you to have that high level focus, then outsource. Uh, agreed, agreed. Michael, I hope that helped you out. Certainly, let us know if there's anything else we can answer for you. Let's move on. Um, you brought up live chat, which is interesting because I actually have a couple of questions here about live chat. Brian wrote in, if people are on my site viewing cars, how can an off-site chat service answer questions about my inventory? So I kind of feel like this is probably one of the live chat companies actually asking the question because they want me to answer them. <laughs> uh, so there's, there's a whole series of very typical questions, and that's one of them. Uh, funny enough, they actually do a better job than salespeople, and here's why. One, they spend all day from both companies taking chats from consumers across the country. Now, if you ever read transcripts from chats, especially when I did it for a big portal, so I saw it for you know hundreds of dealers, Questions are not very like unique or far-fetched. They are the same questions over and over and over again. And so when you become really good at being able to answer their questions and then get their contact information, uh, once again, it goes back to being a customer service tool. Just to throw out some stats, when I launched Live Chat for a portal, on average, we saw the increased lead volume go up about 30% without any cannibalization of the emails or phone calls, which means phone calls and emails did not go down, so it's not like they would have just contacted that dealer anyways. They got 30% additional uptick in leads. Why is that? Well, that's the, uh, those are the people that you hadn't won over yet. All the people that called and emailed uh, were already going to contact you because you have the vehicle. The people that did chat had a question. Uh, I bought a Mini Cooper a couple years back, and um, Mini Cooper doesn't then explode uh, the features like navigation, and that was an important feature to me. And if you don't take the picture right, you can't see the navigation on a dinky little European dashboard there. So, oh, and I didn't have time to drive around to five different dealerships to look at the car. So live chat was an easy way for me to say, does this car have no navigation? If they said yes, now you became a contender and you're more likely to get my contact information. Live chat companies that do it for a living, they get on average 80% of the contact information 
and they set the appointment 17%. Now that was like last year's stat, so forgive me, I, I haven't deep dove into it, but that's still an impressive number. But on average, if you look at your contact at once through your portals like Edmunds or AutoTrader or Cars.com, you'll see that typically at the dealership level, they only get the contact information 8% of the time. So I would rather turn it over to people that do a better job, uh, that do it all day long, get me eight times more leads out of my existing customer base off my already most performing portal, which is my website. Very interesting. And uh, to back you up, April, AJ Maida wrote in, he said, hire the orchestra and become the conductor. So <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Who doesn't like AJ? Come on. Um, AJ, right. a Brian, I hope that helped you out. AJ actually had a follow-up question about the live chat, and I believe you had it in one of the graphs where you said uh, it was one of the things that that uh, was giving up uh, most uh, well-used tools that dealerships were, were using. Yep. Okay. Uh, AJ said, do you know what the total numbers would be if you combined the managed chat and the live chat? I mean, people, are dealerships only doing one or the other, right? Yes, they're only doing one or the other. So you would have, you would have just added those together. I, and I probably, yes, I do have those numbers somewhere um, of what it would be. But it was, I mean, exponentially more than any other feature. Right, right. And I... I, I I'm a firm testament about live chat. I used it a couple times for some really big purchases, and as soon as I got my question answered, I bought from that company. So, yep. and granted, it wasn't a car, but, you know. And that's it, evolving. I, I mean, now now if you look at it, what's evolving, the next uh, evolution, so if you're not even on chat, get on chat because the next evolution is text-to-chat. Mm -hmm. uh, with a growing number of people shopping on their mobile phone and out and about, uh, even Google released a study that half the people are cross shopping a vehicle while on the own dealer's lot. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. The ability, the ability right there on their phone for them to be able to text into the dealership, ask them a question, and the dealership can reply via chat, obtain their mobile phone, and be able to communicate with the consumer via text, the way in which most of us are now communicating with half the people we know. Uh, that's the next evolution. So uh, we're already moving past chat into chat to text. I know, and something that was even only, let's say, two years ago, just completely not even thought about, and now the, it's it's morphed into this now. You know, um, let's get to this question from Angie. Angie says, "How do you get dealers who don't understand technology to invest in technology and digital advertising?" Oh, Angie, I feel for you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there so, are still those guys out there who really believe that the newspaper is still the best way to go. I know there is. So, so Angie's common problem is so typical. In an ideal world, Angie's sitting next to her dealer right now, right? And they're both watching this together, and they're both able to have, like, a great dialogue over the importance. Uh, but she's got a battle, right? So that goes back to, you know, Internet managers and marketing managers need a budget to be effective, they have to sell their dealer or dealer principal on uh, on that fact. So what I found to be effective because I have when I took over when I was doing uh, digital marketing for the agency, I had a lot of very traditional dealers, like very good, like one didn't have an email, like didn't even have an email. Oh my email gosh, are you serious? Meeting, right, They're all physical meetings, all I, physical meetings, right? I don't understand. Uh, are they literally sitting behind their desk saying, "Ah, this fad, the internet, it's gonna pass." <laughs> with a lot of is remember about the passion part you have to turn fear into passion right so the first time I logged uh, somebody talked to me about analytics I was overwhelmed really overwhelmed and then I looked at it and I was like oh okay and I clicked on some buttons and nothing no catastrophes happened and then bit by bit I was like oh this is kind of interesting and then it was kind of like fun to see if I did X what would happen and then then I got really curious like okay if I do this how is this gonna affect this and then what started as a phobia, a fear, turned into a passion, and now I'm wildly interested about what happens. So I had a very traditional dealer here in Minneapolis that was primarily traditional marketing. And basically, you know, I just had to use my sales girl tricks, right? Like I had to basically, <laughs> that sounded bad. Say salesman tricks. <laughs> um, but you're, you're selling them on the ability to be successful, and they need to have faith, right? So there's a couple components when you're addressing a dealer. One, you need to show them, I hate to say it, what their competitors are doing. So one, hey, look, 
Our competitors are here and here and here. Our competitors have this kind of website. Look at our website traffic compared to their website traffic. We're not winning. So that's one. Dealers are very competitive. Uh, it's still a very competitive industry. So you got to appeal to their sense of fire, right? Like they do not want to lose. So that's one in a gentle way without saying, hey, look, it's, this isn't my opinion. This is just fact. They've got 5,000 monthly uniques. We have two. That's a, that's a true statement. The second part of that is having confidence, right? So when you come in, especially with vendors, they're like, oh, well, I think I'll be able to get this many leads or you should be able to do this. I mean, Eliana started out her presentation that's like, if you want double website leads, you better call dealer. Like, that makes me go, oh, God, I want to call dealer. <laughs> I mean, there's a conviction there, right? And they're able to back it up with a number. So when you talk to the owners and GMs, you have to sit there and say, you know, okay, look, this is what we need to do. This is the plan. So that process, that strategy process, a lot of them want to feel like it's not like willy-nilly, like they're not just throwing money out the door, because a lot of dealers do. They're like, we're going to try this, and we're going to try this, and then they don't truly know how to monitor it, and then they don't give it enough time. So for them to be really effective, you need to come in with a plan. And dealers would not give me $400,000 of marketing and say, how about it, April? Good luck. Let me know how it goes. No, I have to come back and sit there and say, okay, this is what I'm recommending. This is what I think the results are going to be. This is how long I'm going to monitor it. And then based on its outcome, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And they look at me and go, okay, well, they know I have a better plan than what they have, so they're going to agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that very traditional dealer, the one that didn't even have email, I took 10% of his budget. And when, that, when I gave him a nice pretty report that showed him what I did and his TV and radio and newspaper couldn't do that, he gave me 10 more percent. And then he gave me 10 more percent. And over eight months' time, I got 70% of his digital budget. And in August of, it was about two years ago, August, but in the most of the down depression, he sold more cars than he ever had and had the highest grosses in 30 years. Mm. And with that, when that guy hugged me, like I totally felt like I was like, like accepted by like his ad or something, right? Like I was like, so like, you did it. I proved it. I made it worth it. He had a good month. He saw it. You know, so I just had to, I had to systematically tear down his phobia and fear of the unknown and, and take charge and show him how to succeed. Yeah, and, and Angie, believe me, you are not alone. I have a lot of people here writing in saying, Angie has the same issue I do. I, I can't wait to hear what April says about this. You know what I mean? So, Angie, I, I feel for you, but I agree with April. They're numbers, guys. Those dealers, if you can show it to them in the numbers, I think you, you can win this over. You can win them over. Yeah, I really numbers do. and conviction. Numbers and conviction. There you go. And a plan, of course. <laughs> so good luck, Angie. I'm pulling for you, girl. Oh, Angie also says she's a Nissan dealer, and the Datium info should already be on our site. How do I get it? Yeah, isn't that right? It's on all the yeah. Nissan sites, right? It is on all Nissan sites. Uh, so all you have to do is uh, contact your uh, whoever runs your website through Nissan and ask them for access to your analytics. And if you have a problem with that, email me. I have a, an email from Dadium that kind of walks you through it. But that, I think that, that was their last response. Just contact your Nissan website provider and ask them for, and what they'll do is you'll just go to, like, it's called the Visicon website, and you'll just, like, log it in, and you'll get it. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, April. Okay, next question comes to us from Seth. Can we get a PDF of the slides here today, or will it be posted on dealer events? Thank you for asking that. Uh, so at some point, I will make this entire presentation available. Uh, just recently, uh, it was viewed by NADA, uh, uh, NADA University, and there's some discussion about us turning it into an uh, NADA workshop. So before I make it 100% public, like right now, this entire recorded version is available uh, with dealer on. And so you can obviously go back and watch the video and, you know, take screenshots or whatever you need to do. Uh, and I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions and send you whatever you need. Uh, but at the moment, I'm trying not to make it public in case we decide to uh, present it at NAD. That, and if anyone, if there was any reason not to make it public, that is a darn good reason. But yeah, don't, worry. I'm by that. <laughs> don't worry, we're going to have the recording posted later on today. It will definitely be up tomorrow for you to download. I'll be sending you the link later today. So, Seth, thank you so much for your question. Michael wrote in, what would you say is, wait, would you say it's more about ROI with chat or is it more about customer service? Hmm. So it is absolutely a uh, customer service tool. Absolutely. Right. I totally agree. Thank you, April. <laughs> but with that said, but with that said uh, you could 
you can technically make it a lead discussion if you were trying to position it to a boss. So for example, when I was trying to talk to dealer, if I wanted dealers to do live chat and they absolutely put their foot down and said no. And here's, here's, a, here's a thermometer. If your salespeople suck on the phone, they're going to suck at chat. That, that just seems to be the, the true statement, right? So pick your battles, right? First get really good at phone, get really good at email, and then worry about chat. So, sounds sounds and, legit. <laughs> exactly. So I look at it this way. If I was going to say, so to, to, to outsource chat, it's a little pricey. So say it's like $1,500. What I would do, though, is I would look at the uptick in leads that I got out of my own website and the conversion ratio to sale uh, based on... Uh, what came of those additional leads. And obviously, if then the lead and the sale was much greater than what I was missing as the opportunity, then you can technically call chat a lead provider and you can attach it to you know, a gross and an ROI. So you can do that as its argument, but kind of like Facebook, it's not necessarily, it's, it's, it's to be able to give the customers what they want and all the top dealers, just like you saw in the survey, all the top dealers that are thriving at digital sales are focusing on the customer, and they're focusing on the customer by giving them what they want, and they want live chat. And Michael, there's plenty of, of different chat companies out there, and they all offer something a little bit different, and I'm certain that their prices would reflect that as well. So if you haven't gone to live chat yet, you might want to look into it. I think there's some really good companies out there. Uh, he's already writing in telling me who he doesn't like, so I don't want to say the name. <laughs> we won't go there, but but I'm sure that there's somebody else that can really help you out, Michael, and we wish you the best of luck. And um, AJ, our friend AJ wrote in when we were talking about the uh, text to chat, or chat to text, um, he said you can also reverse the text to chat as a way for your customer, for your service department to communicate to communicate with customers. That is such a great idea, AJ. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is a great idea. There's, it's unfortunate that we haven't gotten good enough. I, I, in fact, I'll probably follow up with AJ and hear more about his processes. By the way, I have to say, 90% of the great information I get, I get from great dealers. So if you're not networking, if you're not 20 groups, if you're not going to conferences and seeking out uh, you know, people that you want to emulate, AJ Maida's, the, the Jim Bells, the Kevin Fry's, the, you know, Andrew DeFeo, like, they are my barometer. I watch them to see how they are doing, what they're doing, and they are great sources. And you know what's great is they are so confident that they share information pretty freely. They, they are so confident in their process and execution that they are still willing to give um, a leg up to another dealer. Maybe not the same brand dealer in the same market, but for the most part, they're pretty no, good. No, but I mean, I'm certain that, you know, a Ford dealer in Shreveport isn't going to have to worry about exactly. a Nissan dealer in Boston, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, I'd say one of the best things I've done is just made friends with really great people. And I'm glad you're my friend, April. <laughs> AJ wrote in, you guys are such smart girls. And he also said, as tweeted two years ago by Larry Bruce, so I need to say this, now you know April Rain, and as was once tweeted, if you don't know April Rain, you're not in the car business. So congratulations, you're all now in the car business. So there you go. <laughs> I mean, I'm blushing, you can't see it, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> he said you'd spit out your coffee. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, AJ, and thank you, April. That was really spectacular. And for all you people who hung on with us this whole time, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please fill out the questionnaire, the, the survey that's going to come to you when I close this webinar and give this girl some props because she did an amazing job. April, you were awesome. And if you're coming up with another idea for another webinar, I am all ears. I would love to get you back on as soon as possible. Of course, I want to remind the audience that a link to download a copy of this webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today. Please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And today's webinar is also going to be posted within 24 hours at dealeron.com slash webinars. And there you can also view our upcoming webinar schedule and access any of our past webinars too. And like I said, please fill out that short survey. We need to see what you think about today's webinar. And we're going to also randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to also receive some Google swag. And I'm so glad you guys hung around because I got some big news for you. Right, April? <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Invitations are going out tomorrow for next week's webinar, How to Create More Ups and Opportunities Through Search and Display. 
Duncan Scary of More and Scary fame, and also the current CEO of Haystack Digital Marketing. He is going to share the most cutting-edge, effective, and profitable digital marketing techniques, including remarketing or retargeting and the very latest advancements in display. Big bonus, your competitor probably isn't doing them. So this is a great opportunity for every dealership to learn from the absolute best in the biz. And if your current online strategies have stalled, or you simply want to increase your digital marketing ROI, then this is one webinar you can't afford to miss. Oh, and I should mention, Duncan Scary is giving away a truly incredible prize worth, deep breath, deep breath, over $14,000. I know that's crazy, right? April, that's crazy, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attend his webinar. <laughs> <laughs> he is giving away a prize worth over $14,000. Holy moly. I, that's just totally crazy. So missing this presentation is just absolutely the most insane thing. You would, That's the wrong thing to do. You want to be here next week. It's going to be brought to you by your friends here at DealerOn. Don't forget, our weekly webinars are held every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Be there or be square. We have some awesome webinar subjects planned for this year. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, then please contact me directly. I'm everywhere. You can't miss me. I'm on every automotive social network, including dealer events. So find me, track me down, get in touch with me, email me at eliana at dealeron.com. I love hearing from you. And <laughs> somebody wrote in, Duncan is nuts, but he's the best. I'll be there, so you got it. I hope to see you there next week, too. Thank you much for, so much for spending this time with us today. And we hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Have yourselves a good one. 14 Thanks, Gs. Guys. Okay. 14 Gs. So Jump change. <laughs> I love it. I love my audience. Thank you so much, April. Thanks a lot, Eliana. Bye-bye.